thousands of years ago, as the first great civilizations emerged from the East. Life was completely deterministic. The gods controlled everything, and that was that. It was a dark and hopeless world, ruled over by a select few. Millions spent their lives in servitude, with death as their only salvation. For eons, the system remained unchecked, until a new idea was born, an idea that came from the West. But like a flower, its seeds spread with the wind, and for the first time in history, humans began to believe that we as individuals are free to choose our own destiny. This is Crete, the largest island of Greece, located all the way down south, more south than the north coast of Africa. In antiquity, over 4,000 years ago, here was the center of the Minoan civilization, the first manifestation of Western civilization, where the concepts of self-determination and free will first took root. With exquisite beaches, warm seas, and mythical ancient cities, it's no wonder that every year Crete ranks as one of the top vacation spots in the world. But this is only part of the story. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Konstantin Papanikolaou, and I'm a filmmaker. Several years ago, I came to Crete for a few days to film some skiing. During that visit, I became captivated. Ever since, I've been asking myself the question, what is it that makes Crete truly so special? Today, I've returned to search for the answer. Crete is more than uh, what people think. It's not just beaches and sunshine and antiquities. Of course it is all that, but it's more than that. The truth is that Crete is a, is a mountain uh, terrain, but uh, for some reason it is surrounded by sea. And our culture also, it's not a, a sea culture. We are uh, mountain people. All right, let's get started. Here on Crete, the big business is tourism. Every summer, the population of the island explodes as hordes of sun-deprived Europeans flock here in mass, like children, to a giant amusement park. In the end of August, the tourism is so sweet and the world is in the mountains. One is further than the other. There is no place to play a place in the mountains many times. Yes, it's like Disneyland, certainly. In general, when I travel a lot of time, I think how beautiful it is to go to the sea. Να παγώνει από το κρύο <laughs> και να μην ακούς τίποτα παρά μόνο τον αέρα. The tourist season starts in mid-April and runs six months without a break. Then, around mid-November, the temperatures drop, rain starts falling, and the mountains receive their first dusting of snow. 
Κάθε χρόνο κοντά στο Δεκέμβρη είμαστε όλοι στα τηλέφωνα πολύ ενθουσιασμένοι με το που θα πέσει το πρώτο χιόνι να ανέβουμε πάνω στο βουνό. Αυτό είναι η Κρήτη. Αυτό αγαπάμε στην Κρήτη. Although few realize it, the Crete has mountains. Five distinct ranges, in fact, spread across the island. And for the skiers and snowboarders who call this island home, now is the time when they get to enjoy their own vacation. It's not something that is happening once in a while, every hundred years. It's something that you can do every year. If you want to experience the real Crete, you have to be here in winter. Κάθε λεπτό είναι διαφορετικό. In places like uh, Crete, where the summer is intense, you are waiting for the winter in order to leave your shadow. I mean the shadow during summer. We are lucky in a way because all that uh, people that comes, they are okay guys. You exchange uh, smiles and it's, it's something nice. We are lucky about that. But you cannot enjoy the island the way you can during uh, all the other uh, time of the year. It wasn't always this way. When did this um, explosion start happening? It, uh, it was not all the time like this. We didn't have the tourism uh, after World War II or before that. But 60s, 70s and then in a very strong way during the 80s and uh, 90s, uh, these uh, got uh, out of scale. And winter tourism, it's it's basically minimal. Uh, it's, it's not existed, uh, not at all. There, there is no winter tourism here. Uh, at some point, uh, some point in the future, it might be, but right now there is no winter tourism. It's a joke. Skiing in Crete was introduced during the Second World War by the Germans, who used skis to search for Greek resistance fighters who were hiding in the snow-covered mountains. At the end of the war, the skis were left behind and forgotten, until they were rediscovered a decade later by members of the local mountaineering club. <laughs> Δεν ήταν έτσι, ήταν καφέ ξεχαλασμένα. Και τα είχαν αφήσει σε ένα σπίτι που μέναν οι Γερμανοί όταν παραδοθήκαν το 1945 στα Γανιά. Και αυτός που τα είχε το μάθε ότι ενδιαφερόμαστε το 1955, ως τότε τα είχε διατηρήσει. Τα παλιότερα είναι αυτά που είναι απάνω. Μετά ήταν, κάναμε την 58... When these two pioneers started out, there still weren't any automobile roads leading up into the mountains. Instead, they rode their bicycles for two days to reach the snow. <laughs> Ζήτ, να με την πλάτη κάτω. Βρίσκαμε μια πλαγιά, ένα κομμάτι, να βάζαμε τα σκύ, κατεβαίναμε κάτω. Μετά σιγά σιγά άρχισαμε και να στρίβουμε. Είδε τα ίχνη τις γραμμές των σκύ ένας κυνηγός και σκέφτηκε ότι είναι, τι είναι, τι είναι, πρέπει να είναι φίδι. Δεν έβλεπε πατήματα ανθρώπου. Πήγε στο μυαλό του ότι είναι φίδι, τι άλλο να είναι. Κατέβηκε κάτω στο χωριό και λέει φίδια πάνω στο βουνό, κακό σημάδι, θα βρει κακό το χωριό μας, φίδια είναι. Και αυτοί που μας είχαν δει ότι ανεβαίναμε πάνω και τα είχαν στην πλάτη, 
είπαν ότι αυτό είναι και το εξήγησαν ότι δεν είναι φίδι, ήταν αυτή η κουζουλή που ανεβήκανε απάνω και κάνανε με αυτά τα σανίδια που κρατούσαν και παίζανε στο χιόνι. Αυτός όμως σκέφτηκε ότι τι άλλο να είναι οι γραμμές αυτές, φίδι θα είναι. Κάτι πολύ μοναδικό επίσης ε, είναι ότι παρόλο που μετά από τόσα χρόνια που κάνουμε σκι εδώ πέρα και κάνουμε διασκήσεις είναι ότι κάθε φορά ανακαλύπτουμε κάτι καινούριο, σκιάρουμε μια πλαγιά που δεν την είχαμε σκιάρει ποτέ και κάθε φορά που σκιάρουμε κάτι παραπάνω βλέπουμε ακόμα πόσε πιο πολλέ δυνατότητες υπάρχουν στο βουνό για να σκιάρουμε ακόμα περισσότερα πράγματα τα οποία δεν είχαμε δει καν ότι υπάρχουν. For a period, during the 1960s and 70s, ski and winter sports began to take off in Crete. In 1975, the Greek National Ski Championships were held in the mountains above Hanya, with competitors hiking up the hill for their runs. The excitement reached an apex several years later, with the construction of the first ski center on the island, on the mountain Psiloritis. There was an attempt up in Psiloritis to set up something like a winter activity center, but uh, it ended uh, not to be used, ruined and uh, useless. We didn't get us anything out of it because it was uh, ahead of its time. We didn't have the culture to use it or make something good out of it. Βρισκόμαστε στο χιονοδρομικό κέντρο του Ψιλορίτη, μάλλον σε ό,τι έχει απομείνει από το χιονοδρομικό κέντρο του Ψιλορίτη. Ε, Κτηριακέ εγκαταστάσει που βρίσκονται πίσω μου ήταν χώρο φιλοξενία και προοριζόταν για χώρο φιλοξενία και εστιατόριο. Δεν θυμάμαι να λειτουργήσε ποτέ. The ski slope uh, had two small uh, toe lifts. There was the first lift on the right side. You can still see some remains of it, then you would ski across the slope halfway up and then there, there would be the second lift taking you up to that little band of rocks and that was the ski slope. This whole place worked for, I don't know, a decade maybe, but definitely not more than that and let's say a handful of times per year. It was that it seemed that people didn't know how to work how to work Ε, αυτό, το, αυτό το χιονοδρομικό, που, γιατί δεν είναι μόνο το κτίριο. Θα πρέπει προφανώς να αυτό το πράγμα να υποστηρίζεται και άμα άλλα πράγματα. Ε, είναι πολύ εύκολο στην, α, στη θάλασσα, στην παράκτια ζώνη, να, να, να επενδύσεις στον τουρισμό. Φτιάχνεις, α, οι, οι υποδομές υπάρχουν. Ε, αντίθετα, στο, στο εσωτερικό, στα βουνά, θα πρέπει να επενδύσεις περισσότερο. Back then, it seemed a very nice idea to start a winter tourism business. And uh, it did work for a few years, but it was more or less doomed to end up like this. After the close of the ski center, skiing in Crete became the hobby of a handful of dedicated mountaineers, the folks who were willing to put forth the effort to hike up the mountain on their own power. What do you need to go skiing? Snow. And snow we have. Uh, you don't necessarily need ski resorts. I mean, people have been doing it for thousands of years. It's not something we discovered in the 20th century. So that's the thing with Crete. Uh, all you have is mountains and skis and snow, <laughs> you just go out there and do it. In recent years, this type of human-powered skiing has soared in popularity, with new festivals and competitions being organized all over the world. Sensing an opportunity, the ski mountaineers of Crete decided to create their own event, which they called Piera Creta. Piera Creta is something that comes out of a parea. We have to define what parea is. Parea is a group of uh, people, friends, of good friends, that uh, 
not just eat and drink together. They are dreaming together. They create vision together and ideas pop up. And Piera Creta was an idea like that. It popped up. The idea was to host the first ever ski mountaineering race in the mountains of Crete. Unlike alpine ski racing, in ski mountaineering, competitors must also climb up the mountain in addition to skiing down. For an island with no ski resorts or chairlifts, it made perfect sense. Piera Creta, the name, was a wordplay inspired by a famous ski mountaineering race called Piera Menta, which takes place annually in the French Alps. The most interesting things started from a plaque. It was a plaque. It was a plaque. It was a plaque. It was a plaque. Σε στο ταξίδι για το Πιέρα Φέτα, Πιέρα Μέντα, Πιέρα Κρέτα και κόλλησε πάρα πολύ. Πιέρα is a word for the stone and the mountains of Crete are 100% stone mountains, is very little forest. It was totally not organized, it was just a bunch of friends that decided to, to try to make the event the Πιέρα Κρέτα. The nucleus of the Piera Creta team consisted of five close friends, split between the island's two main cities. In Heraklion, the capital, were Nikiforos Steakaikis, a telecommunications and systems engineer, and George Spinthaikis, a staff member at the University of Crete. In Hanya, the capital of the western province, were Manolis Mesarhaikis, a restaurant and hotel owner, Manolis Rumliotaikis, a bartender and event promoter, and Sirmatenia Parasaiki, who grew up in Copenhagen and who now serves as the Consul General in Crete for Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. As experienced as this group was, however, the project quickly turned into a major undertaking. We realized that we couldn't do it ourselves. We could go up in the mountains and set up a, a race, up and down the slope. But that's not Piera Creta. We needed to give it color. First, a location had to be chosen. The mountain range in the west, Lefkaori, proved too difficult. So the decision was made to hold the race on the smaller massif of Psilorites. Psilorides is located an hour and a half by car from the city of Heraklion and can be ascended and skied in a single day. The mountaineering club in Heraklion quickly bought into the idea. But in order for anything more to happen, the team would have to secure the support of the locals living on the mountain. Η ιδέα ήταν πολύ καλή, έπεσε η ιδέα στο τραπέζι. Τώρα ήταν οι δυσκολίε τη υλοποίηση θα ήταν όλα τα προβλήματα. Αν πηγαίναμε εκεί και βρίσκαμε ένα τείχο μπροστά μα και ανθρώπου που ασχολιόντουσαν μόνο με την κτηνοτροφία και λέγανε Α, εμά δεν μα ενδιαφέρει αυτό και τέτοιο, ίσω να μην είχε γίνει τίποτα. Για το Πιέρα Κρέτα, όταν πήγε, πήγε ο Νικηφόρο και οι άλλοι και εγώ, όλοι μαζί τέλο πάντων, για να του ανακοινώσουμε το τι θέλουμε να κάνουμε, σίγουρα ήταν λίγο από απόσταση. Ήταν επιφυλακτική διότι δεν μπορούσαν να καταλάβουν αυτό που εννοούσαμε. Θα είναι πολύ δύσκολο να το καταλάβουν. Και σίγουρα για κάποιον που έχει μάθει ένα συγκεκριμένο τρόπο ζωής, είναι δύσκολο να του πεις κάτι καινούριο και να το υιοθετήσει. The mountain is their working place. And uh, for them the way to relax is go to the city, go for coffee or the cinema. They find it bizarre that somebody would leave the luxury and the comfort of a city to go up and sweat and uh, have a hard time in snow and in harsh conditions and suffer as a recreation. Well, for 
the village is the mountain during winter. Uh, it's not a friendly place to be. Uh, it can be icy. It, you can get injured or even killed. It's not a. It's not friendly. It's not friendly uh, during winter. The mountains was for them only for the summer, and uh, their sheep and their farming. Skepticism in the mountain villages was not unexpected, and for good reason. Crete has a long history of outside interference. Locals are naturally suspicious, but don't mistake this as a sign of weakness. As stories from the Second World War reveal, the people of this island, when called upon, are capable of superhuman feats. The best example for its sheer audacity is the one about the abduction of General Heinrich Kreipa. So tell us a little bit about uh, what happened with General Kreipa. Who was General Kreipa? General Kreipa was um, one of the generals who were uh, moved in Crete. He was not a Nazi. He was a very official general following his career, as we say, his work. But he was unlucky. It had been three years since the Nazi invasion and the infamous Battle of Crete. Even though they had lost and come under occupation, the Cretan resistance continued to stage guerrilla raids from their mountain hideouts. In early May of 1944, they descended into Heraklion and ambushed the general on his drive home. They took the car as well and they continued in Heraklion, through the city of Heraklion, passed through many control uh, bars, uh, out of the Venetian walls, out of the west gate of Heraklion, heading west. An hour and a half outside the city, they ditched the car. But instead of doing the obvious thing and heading north to a nearby beach, they turned south and headed directly into the mountains. They approached Anoya village. From Anoya, they walked again up on the mountains, heading to Nida plateau. Let's say that from there, the nightmare of the mountains started. A British motor launch was set to meet them on the south coast. So they continued up and over the mountain on footpaths still buried in snow. On the descent, however, the initial plan fell apart. A malfunction with the wireless set broke off communications. Meanwhile, during the delay, enemy forces had set up a large garrison near the beach where the pickup would take place. With no escape, the team had no choice but to continue walking. They walked from cave to cave, hidden in uh, gorges and the ravines. The sky was uh, full of small aeroplanes, uh, searching. It was a long, long and tiring thing for the whole group. Finally, after 18 days on foot, they made it to the coast, where the general was loaded onto a torpedo boat and taken to Cairo. Let me tell you that uh, although this operation was uh, held, was done by, uh, let's say, 12 people, the day after, I think the whole island was saying, I was there, I did it, I did it. The defeat of the Nazis and the end of war ushered in a new era of peace and prosperity. At the same time, advances in automobile and air transportation had made traveling affordable to the masses for the first time ever. Tourism to Greece exploded. In 1950, the number of visitors arriving in the country totaled 33,000. Today, that number stands at 33 million, with 10 million new visitors alone added in the past four years. Uh, all that land uh, by the sea, which it, it was uh, only uh, stone or sand, 
that is useless from, uh, for uh, agriculture or livestock, overnight it became a gold mine because uh, you could put four walls, one roof, and then one sign rooms to let, and you could start making money, a lot of money. It's something like uh, when the Arabs discovered oil. Uh, I think Crete, it's a special place because it has so much to offer. But on the other hand, I think that the, the people in Crete, they they have lost. Uh, they have lost some of their connection with uh, their roots in the mountains, uh, because we are so much more concentrated on the beach side and the sea and sun side. Αλλιωθήκαμε και αλλιωνόμαστε μέρα με τη μέρα. Όλο βλέπουμε ξένες νοτροπίες. Παίρνουμε και εμείς εδώ πέρα. Έχουν σταματήσει πιο πολύ να τα ήθη, τα έθιμα που είχαμε και κάναμε. Αρχίζουν και χάνονται, αλλοιώνονται όλα αυτά. Έχω την αίσθηση ότι αυτό το πράγμα κάποια στιγμή θα γυρίσει εναντίον μας. Δεν είναι η Κρήτη γνωστή για την ανάπτυξή τη, είναι γνωστή για το φυσικό τη τοπίο. Οι άνθρωποι έρχονται εδώ πέρα για να γνωρίσουν τη φιλοξενία των ανθρώπων, για να γνωρίσουν το φυσικό περιβάλλον, την άγρια ομορφιά και ούτω καθεξής. Και πολλές περιοχές, τολμώ να πω, ότι είναι αρκετά πιεσμένες, αρκετά υποβαθμισμένες. Έχω την αίσθηση λοιπόν ότι αν συνεχίσουμε έτσι, πολύ πολύ σύντομα, θα μιλάμε για μια τελείως διαφορετική κατάσταση από αυτή που υπήρχε πριν από μερικές δεκαετίες. Άρα μήπως πρέπει να γυρίσουμε πίσω και να δούμε ότι ναι, πρέπει να παράξουμε και κάτι και να μην κρεμόμαστε μόνο από τον τουρισμό. Δηλαδή η κληρονομιά της Κρήτης είναι πλέον παραγωνισμένη. Δεν μας ενδιαφέρει πλέον ποιοι ήμασταν. Μα άμα δεν ξέρεις ποιο είσαι, πώς θα προχωρήσεις μπροστά όταν δεν γνωρίζεις την ιστορία σου, όταν έχεις ξεχάσει από πού είσαι, όταν έχεις ξεχάσει τη μυρωδιά του χώματος, εκεί πώς θα πας μπροστά. Piera Creta was still just an idea. Nothing could move forward without the support of the people living at the base of the mountain. The team desperately needed some inside help. In the beginning, you need somebody to be your liaison officer. We were in uncharted territories. You, you, you need a compass and somebody that knows the area. Fortunately, in the village of Livadia, they found the person they were looking for, a local shepherd and priest named Papa Andrea who, during the week, operates a business producing traditional Cretan cheeses, and who, on weekends, performs services at the church in the center of town. They told us what is the Rivatic Ski, and with which way can the Psylorides be able to develop this process. When I first heard it, because we had drunk and some of the Cikudiers, I said, maybe it won't be like this. The next day, when I woke up, I started to work in my head. I started to believe it. Αυτό που από εδώ, από το σπίτι του Βοσκού έβλεπα, να το βλέπω στην πράξη. Παπανδρέας is a guy that he can connect with your emotions and understand them. And when you are able to do that, then it's easy for the other guy to transfer his vision to you. The vision is not words, it's emotions. Like everyone else in the villages, Papandrea had never ventured up the mountain in winter. But the energy and excitement of Piera Creta were wearing off on him. So, he decided to give it a go. Papandreas is a kind of mind. It's just a category of him. He's the father who does ski, who is a ectinotrophos, who has the house of the Vosku. He does everything. Βάζω τα σκι και για πρώτη μου φορά κάνω σκι στον ψιλορίτη. Είναι πάρα πολύ εύκολα. 
Δεν είναι δύσκολο. Το ορειβατικό σκι είναι κάτι που σε ηρεμεί, κάτι που σε μαγεύει. Έχω κάνει περίπου 45 θείες λειτουργίες πάνω στο εκκλησάκι του Τίμιου Σταυρού. Είναι μεγάλη απόλαυση να ζεις στον Ψιλορίτη και να τον βλέπει σιωνισμένο να κάνεις κατάβαση. Μπράβο, Παπαντρέα! Μπράβο, ρε! It wasn't just sliding on snow that had captured his imagination. Here in Livadia, like many rural areas in Greece and around the world, young people are leaving for the cities to search for work. For Papa Andrea, Pierre Creta was a chance to take action. Because if something doesn't change, this village and many like it may soon disappear. <laughs> Γιατί όταν κάποιο παιδί μεγαλώσει, σπουδάσει, δεν βρίσκει το αντικείμενό του να ζήσει, να καθίσει στο χωριό, να καθίσει στην πόλη, η επιλογή είναι μία. Τι να κάνει, θα φύγει. Γι' αυτό δεν πρέπει να ερημώσουμε τα χωριά. Πρέπει να τα κρατήσουμε ζωντανά. Παλιότερα το χωριό μας είχε μεγαλύτερο πληθυσμό. Εγώ όταν πήγε ένα σχολείο, η Κράνα και τα Λιβάδια που είναι μία κοινότητα, ήταν πάνω από 300 παιδιά. Τώρα έχει 150 μαθητές το Δημοτικό Σχολείο. Αυτό τι σημαίνει, ότι αρχίζουν πλέον ένα νέο ζευγάρι να μην κάνει πάρα πολλά παιδιά, γιατί είναι δύσκολο η επιβίωσή του. Πιστεύω ότι αυτός ο τόπος έχει πάρα πολλές δράσεις. Να κάνει κάποιος καταλήματα, να μπορεί να φιλοξενήσει τον επισκέπτη, να δημιουργηθούν κάποια μονοπάτια μέσα στο βουνό, να μπορεί να περπατήσει ο επισκέπτης στο βουνό, να το ζήσει, να δει αυτή την εμπειρία να δει αυτή την ομορφιά, να δει αυτή τη μοναδικότητα που δεν θα τη δει πουθενά. Το χειμώνα για το θέμα όταν χιόνιζε τέλος πάντων το βουνό. Ήταν Φεύγανε τα ζώα από εκεί, τα πηγαίνανε στα σχημαδιά. Δεν πιστεύα και ποτέ που πηγαίνει άνθρωπο. Ποτέ. Και όταν είδα και πρώτη φορά σκιέρα κατεβαίνω την κορφή του ψηλού, δεν το πίστευα. Στην αρχή σκέφτηκα πω αυτοί που ασχολούνται με το, αυτό το άθλημα είναι υπερφύσεω. Με τη βοήθεια του Παπα Ανδρέα, οι περισσότεροι από τι πόλει took an interest in Πιέρα Κρέτα. Among them, a local plumber named Manolis Nictaris. Manolis, or Rolios as he's called by his friends, was born and raised in Livadia. Both his father and grandfather were shepherds on Psyloritis. Today, the family business is carried on by his cousins. For Rolios, who spends most of his time working down in the lower elevations, the idea of hiking and skiing in his own backyard proved irresistible. Έβαλα το ένα, έκανα έτσι λίγο το πόδι μου, φοβήθηκα, λέω, αυτό και στράσω, σκοτωθώ. Μου λέει, κάνε δύο κύκλους, έκανα δύο κύκλους, εμπάσεις περιπτώσεις, έβαλα και τα δύο πέδιλα. Όταν γλίστρεξα λίγο και ήρθα με το σώμα λίγο κέντρο, κατάλαβα μια, μια ανασφάλεια, πως υπάρχει κάποιο έλεγχο. Και μ' άρεσε να. The amazing thing about Rolios, however, is what he did next. After a handful of lessons on the lower slopes of the mountain, he set out to ski from the summit. And on his first attempt, he succeeded in accomplishing something that most people half his age would never dream of. I believe Rolios is uh, one of the few, if the only guy in the world, that uh, he's climbing up his mountain and he's descending it more than 1,000 vertical meters of descent without ever being in a ski resort. Οπότε ο Μανόλης είναι το παράδειγμα που θέλουμε να δώσουμε σε όλους τους κριτικούς ότι μπορούν να τα καταφέρουν. Δεν είναι ένα άθλημα που νομίζουν ότι θέλει πολλά λεφτά να κάνεις πάρα πολλά ταξίδια να να πάσει χενοδρομικά και τέτοιο. Όχι. Ο Μανόλης είναι το παράδειγμα. Αν θέλεις κάτι και αγαπάς κάτι θα το καταφέρεις. Θα το κάνεις. Ρόλιος also could serve as an example for the younger generation, to show them that even if they gave up traditional work, 
even if they had to leave one day for the city, going up the mountain was still worthwhile. Και κάναμε την ημέρα πάνω κάτω, κάναμε πολλά χιλιόμετρα. Θέλαμε να δεν θέλαμε με την μπάλα, με το περπάτημα, το κυνηγητό. Δεν κάναμε άλλη δουλειά. Σαν να κάναμε προπόνηση. Και είμαστε πιο καλά στη υγεία μα, στην ψυχολογία μα. Γιατί τα παιδιά πάνε να αρρωστήσουν. Και πιστεύω πω άμα ασχοληθούν με το βουνό, διαφορετικά θα έχουμε θέμα. Πιστεύω στην πορεία. Γιατί κάνω όλη μέρα με τα κινητά, μόνο με τα κινητά και δεν κάνω τίποτα. Και είναι και χάλια στην ψυχολογία. Οπότε δεν τα παρακινήσουμε να, να πιάσω τα βουνά όπως το λέμε. Ο μεγάλος εχθρό είναι στην τσέπη του και στο σπίτι του, στο κινητό, στις υπολογιστές. If Crete is indeed the first link in the chain of Western civilization, the natural question to ask is why? To search for the answer, we have to go back to the beginning, millions of years in the past. The only way to do that is to start chipping away at the mountain. All right, we're at the side of the road here on the way to Psyllaridis, on the way to Anogia, a village called Gonyes, and this is some special rock, uh, as I understand. Tell us a little bit more about what we have here. Constantinos here have a very, very special type of rock, the ophiolite. This rock has come directly from the mantle of the earth. If you see the world map, you will see a very large mountainous range from the Alps to the Himalayas. And Greece is a small part of it. The same process that created the Alps, what, 50 million years ago, is now at work here. So essentially, we're in the Alps. Actually, Greece is the only remaining part of the Alps that's active right now. And that's why we have very strong earthquakes. I mean, how, how, how much higher are these mountains going to get? Right now, uh, what's some, it's like 2,400 meters. What's it going to be in another few years? <laughs> the actual model is that Crete, there's no longer going to be at the Aegean Sea. All, 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 all these uh, Cyclades units, all the Aegean Sea will be a large, high mountain, like today we have the Alps. So a, a long-term investor in real estate should be selling, shorting all properties in Mykonos and buying land in Gonyes. <laughs> if they tend to live more than, say, 50 million years, yes, they should get from property here on the mountain. As the era of modern humans dawned some 4,000 years ago, the first great civilizations all existed in the deserts of North Africa and the Middle East, along the Nile and Euphrates rivers. These empires demanded strict control of the people, because if the system broke down, nature would swallow them whole. Crete was something different, an island full of mountains on the far western boundary. But unlike the mountains closer to home, on Crete, water was plentiful. Here was born an alternative, the Minoan civilization. When it rains, water flows down from the atmosphere, enters the body of the limestone, and then it reaches this level, the level of the contact. But then the water starts to move. This is how the springs happen in this contact. Is this because it's just it's, it's a saturated rock? Why all this stuff is growing here? Exactly. The, the massive uh, rocky area here of limestone operates like a huge sponge. Imagine the head pioneers they were climbing this mountain, were now walking and spotting the rocks and the contacts, and they knew where there's a spring. And they would say, this is a good place to create our civilization, to establish our settlement. A few kilometers down the road from the old ski center, in a small plateau called Zomintos, lies an ancient Minoan settlement dating back to 1800 BC. What's impressive here is not the scale of the site, but its location. Zomitos, which was a year-round settlement, lies roughly 20 kilometers from the coast at an altitude of 1200 meters. It's proof that the Minoans, 
the first Westerners were mountain people. For a thousand years, the Minoan civilization thrived uninterrupted on Crete until a series of natural disasters, including a volcanic eruption on the nearby island Santorini, changed everything. With their cities wiped out, the Minoans fell into decline, and the balance of power for the remainder of the Bronze Age shifted north to the mainland. Over the next thousand years, the island remained something of a backwater as the city-states in the north fought amongst each other. But as civilization spread further to the west, Crete, with its strategic location in the center of the Mediterranean, became extremely valuable. The conquest began in the year 68 BC with the arrival of the Romans. When the Roman Empire split in 330 AD, Crete fell under the control of the new Byzantine Empire. Next came the Venetians in 1204. And last, the Ottomans, who ruled from 1669 until the end of the 19th century. Over a span of 2,000 years, the people of Crete lived under foreign occupation. Για να μην σκλαβωθεί το χωριό μας και να κρατηθεί αυτός ο πολιτισμός, το σημαντικό ρόλο σε όλα αυτά τα έπαιξε το βουνό. Γιατί αν δεν υπήρχαν εδώ τα βουνά να φιλοξενούν όλους αυτούς τους αγωνιστές, όλους αυτούς τους ήρωες, οι πόλεις δεν μπορούσαν να κρατηθούν ελεύθερες. Όλοι οι αντάρτες, όλοι οι οπλαρχηγοί, όλη η ιστορία την κράτησε τα βουνά. The revolts began in steady during the Venetian period. With the Ottomans, they increased in frequency, one happening on average every 20 years. But each rebellion, one way or another, would end up failing. For 900 years, the cycle repeated itself. Until finally, in 1898, the Cretans gained their independence. Since then, with the exception of the Nazi rule during World War II, the island has been at peace. Its economic and strategic value today, however, appear to be greater than ever. And with the current state of affairs in the tourism business, many have begun to draw parallels with the past. We collect a very low level of tourists, big numbers of tourists, of course, but low level, bad things, strange things, drunk driving, accidents, thousands of things are accepted. Of course, there is nothing traditional. Everything is prepaid. They are blocked in huge hotels, staying there for 15 days, drinking, eating, swimming, and going back to the country with a little bit darker skin. Proud that they were under a sun. Not under the Cretan sun, they were under a sun. There is no interest where they were. This kind of tourism is a kind of occupation. When you are up in the mountain, you realize why these uh, people in the past, they could fight for so many centuries, rebellions after rebellions, that they were failing rebellions, but they had the stamina of doing it every 20 years. From where that power, that stamina was coming from? It was coming because they were living in that environment. Nowadays, we cannot take these lessons the same way. We have to find another way of getting the same knowledge so that it can 
uh, it can be useful in transforming our way of doing things. Σήμερα όμως περισσότερες δουλειές κάθεσαι σε γραφείο πλέον. Οπότε γίνεις και λίγο βάρης, λίγες και λίγο κοντρούλης. Ε, δεν εξασκείς τον εαυτό σου. Ε, ίσως ε, φοβόμαστε λίγο να βγούμε από την καθημερινότητά μας, να υδρώσουμε λίγο, ε, να νιώσουμε τη φύση στο κορμί μας. Αλλά όλα θέλουν υπομονή και καλή ενέργεια. We, we live in an island in the middle of the Mediterranean, but in effect we are mountain people. We are all mountain people, whether we live on the coastline or up on the summit. We go to find our inner uh, calmness and hear our inner voices and find ourselves away from all the modern life distractions and the modern way of living. Είναι μια μορφή επανάσταση το ότι πηγαίνει στο βουνό, σε ένα τόσο άγριο μέρο, νιώθει ελεύθερο, μόνο. Είναι ουσιαστικά ένα μάθημα ζωή το οποίο σε κάνει πραγματικά να στέκεσαι και στη ζωή σου πιο δυνατό, γιατί σίγουρα ε, σου χτίζει χαρακτήρα και ψυχολογία. Κάτι που χρειάζεσαι γενικότερα έξω στο, στην καθημερινή σου ζωή. Αυτό σε κάνει πολύ πιο δυνατό στο να σταθείς και να πατήσεις τα πόδια σου γερά. Αυτό το πράγμα τώρα νομίζω ότι είναι και η ουσία. Διότι αν μπορέσεις να το κάνεις στο βουνό, γιατί να μην μπορέσεις να το κάνεις και στην πόλη. Το βουνό σου δίνει τη δύναμη, δεν είναι το τέρας. Σου δίνει τη δύναμη για να μπορέσεις να πολεμήσεις τα τέρατα της πόλης. After months of planning and preparation, the day finally arrived for the running of the first Piera Creta. Hundreds of winter sports enthusiasts from around Greece and also from countries abroad had come to experience for their first time the mountains of Crete. It was a magical moment because everywhere were smiling, happy faces, and they made you feel happy yourself and grateful. We had people from abroad, we had people from Sweden, from Germany, from France, Italy, Switzerland. It was a cultural experience. The Piera Creta event was a good way to explore the mountain and in the same time meet the locals. We actually made people come closer to each other. From the time that they come to Crete, to the time that they come to the village, to the time that they come to the village of the village, and then the party, the racomela, the chicudies, the fagot, all of that. Since that first year, three more events have been held, each one drawing more people than the last. On top of that, the Piera Creta team, along with Papa Andrea, Rodios, and the rest of the elders, have organized an annual ski camp to teach the local children the sport. No chairlifts or manicured piece at this hill. Just pure skiing, the Cretan way. We saw that the kids that in the beginning were uh, uh, looking at us with the fancy clothes and they were laughing. After one weekend, they changed their view about what the mountain is, what the ski is. Εσύ μπροστά το νου σου, άστο, άστο πατέρα σου, άστο ναι. Μπράβο ρε Αθήνα, μπράβο. Αγαπήσουν τα ίδια τα παιδιά αυτό το άθλημα και τα ίδια τα παιδιά να περάσουν το μήνυμα ότι έχουμε βουνό, είμαστε δίπλα στο βουνό. Είναι πιο κοντά το τερέν για σκι από ότι το γήπεδο για μπάσκετ. Τρία, δύο, ένα, το. Most impressive, all this has happened during the ongoing economic crisis in Greece. A prolonged and severe depression that experts are now calling 
the worst in recorded history. Our point of view on these things from all the Parea is that no matter how gray a situation is, you can always put some color strokes. A few, but you can put them and they will make a difference. With the success of Piera Creta, a new mountain tradition has been born on Crete. Unfortunately, the excitement has also captured the attention of people seeking a quick profit. Already, talk has begun of opening a ski center on the mountain, sparking fear that the mistakes of the past will be repeated. The tourism of the mountain is not the only tourism of the mountain of the mountain. It's something that is greater. Επισκέπτης που θα μπει στο βουνό είναι επισκέπτης που ξέρει τι σημαίνει βουνό. Πρέπει λοιπόν εμείς όταν κάνουμε μία δράση να την κάνουμε σωστά. Να την κάνουμε αυτή που είναι η δράση. Άρα λοιπόν τι πρέπει να κάνεις. Πρέπει να κάνεις αυτό που έκανε ο παππούς σου. Να κάνεις την κουλτούρα σου. Να κάνεις αυτό που κάνεις με αγάπη. Με υπερηφάνεια. Και αυτό από μόνο του θα σε κάνει πλούσιο. Technology today has made it easier than ever to travel and explore this island. Online booking and home sharing, along with mapping and translation apps, are allowing people to plan affordable vacations on their own. And for the first time, the business of all-inclusive tourism is under pressure. The disruption has been a boon for small hotels, but it's coming at a cost. Because now, every small apartment is a potential hotel room. And with real estate prices across Greece at historic lows, people now face a new and perhaps greater challenge. Yes, in this case, in the last few years, you see all the companies, the old companies, the old companies, and the old companies come and buy or sell the services and the services of Crete. But on the other hand, αλλά από την άλλη πάλι θα, γι, θα γινόταν. Δηλαδή ένα, ένα ποσοστό θα γίνει ούτω ή άλλω. Γιατί αυτή είναι η τάση πλέον. Αυτό είναι η παγκοσμιοποίηση. Έτσι. Δηλαδή μπορεί οποιοδήποτε να μπει και να εισβάλλει και να αγοράσει ή να πουλήσει οτιδήποτε. Το θέμα είναι ότι πώ μπορούμε να προφυλαχτούμε από αυτή την κατάσταση και να μην γίνει το αντίστροφο. Δηλαδή να μην είμαστε εμεί οι υπάλληλοι των ξένων εταιριών και των ξένων συμφερόντων. Γιατί διαφορετικά θα καταλήξουμε όπως το Μεξικό, όπως η Κώστα Ρίκα, όπως πολλές άλλες χώρες και κράτη. Έτσι. Αυτό είναι στο χέρι μας. April arrived, and with it, the end of winter. Still, there was time for one last climb before the summer rush began. Despite the bittersweet feeling, a newfound optimism was in the air. For if the story of Crete can teach us anything, it's that while the oppression we face in the cities may seem never ending, the freedom of the high country is never far away. <laughs> πως για το ριβατικό σκι ή για το βουνό. Ο κάθε ένας πιστεύει για κάποια πράγματα γι' αυτό, δεν είναι, έχει πιο πολύ δύναμη μέσα, αλλά πρέπει να βρει τον τρόπο να, να το βγάλει. Και δεν είναι τίποτα στη ζωή δύσκολη, τίποτα.
overcome the creek, try something different, and head for the mountains. Because an adventure up here is your chance to walk the same primordial earth that inspired the ancients, and that has helped generations of heroes since to understand that self-determination as a way of life shall never come easy. some luck, you too might discover that the struggle itself is the destiny of those who choose to be free. Oh, 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 oh,